In this video, we will briefly describe chemical potential and thermodynamic activity, where these terms come from since they're used extensively. We use thermodynamic activity quite a bit in chemical equilibrium. We use chemical potential and its variations in phase equilibrium. And so, written down the notations used, we'll now define them. Fugacity, and the little hat indicates it's one component, component I, in a mixture. This is the activity of that same component, thermodynamic activity, since activity is used in other fields. The partial molar gives free energy, so the line over the top indicates it's a partial molar quantity. And then the fugacity of just a pure component, no mixture, the Gibbs free energy of pure component, and then the total Gibbs free energy of a mixture. So this variable is extensive. All of these variables are intensive. These variables are independent of the amount. There are molar quantities, for example. This depends on the amount. It's the total. And so we're going to look at then how these relate and where the term activity comes from. So what we're going to see is chemical potential is defined in terms of Gibbs free energy. Then fugacity is used typically instead of chemical potential because it's an easier variable to work with and maybe is a little more physically meaningful. And then activity is sort of a reduced fugacity. And so this relation then will be shown during the rest of this video. So the relation that is in thermodynamics textbooks and basically results from writing down the first law and then using entropy to replace heat in a reversible process and then using the definitions of H and then G we end up with this relation the first two terms for a single component and now for a mixture we've added this other term and we'll try and understand what this results from so the exact differential means that this volume is the derivative of this total Gibbs free energy with respect to pressure, keeping temperature constant, and keeping all of the other species, namely the number of moles of each of these components constant. There's a similar relationship here. And then this means here that the change in the Gibbs free energy total respect to I, in I, because this is a sum over all I, constant pressure, constant temperature, and constant in J. And what in J means that J does not equal I. So all the other species moles are kept constant. We change the moles of say component three. We'd have the chemical potential of component three here. And so this chemical potential is used instead of writing down this derivative every time. And then we also have another term for this it's a partial molar quantity. Any derivative like this respect to number of moles with pressure and temperature and the other moles constant is a partial molar quantity. So this is the partial molar Gibbs free energy. This means how much does the Gibbs free energy change for a mixture when I add a very small amount of component I. So the partial molar quantity is the chemical potential. So mu is the chemical potential. If we have a pure material, right, this is one component in the mixture. If we were to have a pure component, only component I, its chemical potential would be its Gibbs free energy, an intensive variable, but it's not a partial molar quantity because it's only one species. So Gibbs free energy, chemical potential have the same units, joules per mole. Well, we, we'll end up not using chemical potential as much as other variables. Keep in mind Gibbs free energy is like enthalpy in that there's no absolute scale. We pick some reference condition and say enthalpy is zero here. And then same for entropy, we can calculate Gibbs free energy. And so the units for chemical potential are this. And as we show, for example, if we had vapor liquid equilibrium, Component I in a mixture in the liquid phase has the same chemical potential as the vapor phase, and this is our equilibrium criteria. However, what we end up doing is creating another variable that is easier to work with, and that's fugacity. It has units of pressure, and 
If it's an ideal gas, then if you gas the is equal to pressure, so for a component in the mixture, it's equal to partial pressure. But we define fugacity as differential in the chemical potential, gas constant, absolute temperature, differential, the log of the fugacity of that component. So again, we're talking about one component in a mixture, and we can write this for each of the components. If we do an integration, so let's say chemical potential in the alpha phase minus the pure chemical potential. That's RT, the log of the fugacity in that alpha phase, for example, the vapor phase, divided by the fugacity of the pure component, which is F sub I without the small hat on it. Or the other way of looking at it is that the fugacity of one component in the alpha phase divided by its pure component fugacity is the exponential of this difference in chemical potential. Chemical potential in the phase, the mixture, pure chemical potential divided by the gas constant and the temperature. So we define the thermodynamic activity of component I as its fugacity in the mixture over its pure component fugacity and the notation is at a standard state. So the standard state is typically pure component, the same temperature and pressure of the system, and this is our standard state. And, and so if we had an ideal gas, then the activity would just be the mole fraction of that component. If we have an ideal liquid, ideal mixture, the activity would again be the mole fraction. And if we were to have just a pure material, then the activity would be 1, at, you know, for the same conditions as our, our standard state, temperature and pressure. And then for a real system, the activity is going to vary from these values. Very non-ideal, it can vary quite a bit, for example, in liquid phase from just the mole fraction. But we use this activity in our thermodynamic equilibrium calculations instead of mole fractions, for example. That's what shows up in relation with the equilibrium constant.